Hey fam, I'm Kimari, realtor and photographer in the island of Jamaica. Welcome to another episode of At Home. You have heard me say that a city, well, country, city town, you know, you get the idea where you live, is like a big house and then that house is in turn like a small city, country. Meaning that Jamaica is like a great big house that's waiting for us to explore. And then your home is like a small city, now a small country waiting for us to explore. So on At Home, we're gonna explore all of those things. So walk with me now, thanks for coming. If starting a home garden or getting tips on how you can grow your own vegetables at home is a topic that is of interest to you, I invite you to subscribe, like, follow, and also share it with a friend. So, 2020 has been a very interesting year. With COVID-19, now we have had to have our stay-at-home orders in place to keep everybody safe. In Jamaica, we have a little saying that says, grow what you eat and eat what you grow. So in today's episode of At Home, I'm going to talk a little bit about your little home garden, how you can start that up. I'm going to talk to somebody and um, hopefully you can get some tips out of this. So in this field, being a realtor, um, sometimes you have friends who become clients and sometimes you have clients who become friends. I'm going to call up my friend slash client, Mark. He has an egg farm and I know that he also does some backyard gardening. So I'm going to call him up and let's see if I can get some tips from him. Hey Mark, how you been doing? How have you been managing, you know, with the whole COVID situation? How is it going for you? Hey Kimari, uh, COVID-19. Uh, to be honest, I think COVID-19 has been somewhat of a blessing. I've had a lot of home time, you know, spending more time with my wife and my four-year-old. Believe me, homeschooling is a whole different ball game. I'll admit that has, yeah, that takes a whole lot of patience. Um, but all in all, it's been good. Working from home took a little getting used to, but I think I'm in the groove now of things and making it work. I mean, it's been good so far. Okay. Right. Um, you have an egg farm, right? I know you do eggs. So when did you get into the whole home farming thing? And why did you decide to start with the whole home gardening? Ah, uh, yeah, no, I'm definitely still into the egg um, business. Uh, it's actually, the farm is actually in Clarendon. So we got about 300 birds now. Uh, go down weekly, do the collections, bring back in, you know, sell to the smaller wholesalers and a few persons directly. Um, but no, it's definitely solid business. Uh, Farming for me, well, egg farming, to be honest, came up as a, I don't want to say a, a hobby. It was, as I was having a conversation with my grandfather one day, um, previously I usually actually do broilers as well, which is the actual chicken that you consume. I had some issues there, had shut it down, and this was a conversation, I was like, you know, let's try eggs. Um, took out the cash that I had in my wallet at the time, tested it, and recognized that there was a high demand for it, and had a knack for it so i just continued and you know been growing over the last couple of years with it so i'm definitely gonna continue on that i guess trajectory as it relates to the vegetable garden um i've always actually wanted a backyard like it's been a childhood thing for me i grew up you know in mango trees um, guava trees i grew up in nature so i've always wanted to make sure that yes i need to have a backyard and it's funny i live in portmore when people are talking about Portmore, this Portmore, that not having. I live in Portmore with a nice enough backyard to have play area plus the own garden area, which has again proven to be definitely fruitful. So it has seen, let's just say, a, a whole lot of transformation. I've had to cut up peels from sweet potato, potato, fruits, and that way have to actually bury in the garden to actually create usable soil because to be honest the soil wasn't perfect before it's still not perfect but with some work put into it we we're able to actually make it functional 
um i'll give you an idea a little later in terms of some of the other modifications that we've done to you know get it up and running so what tools would you need to start is it something where you know we're gonna have to get up and go shopping or did you start with just something you had around your house how did you start with with what type of tools uh then <laughs> I think it's in a lot of person's heads. Just it's just up here that you need all these fork and all these fancy things. I started out with a cutlass, a simple old machete cutlass, whichever one you want to call it. Um, literally, dig my hole, drop seeds, and if I got sucklings or plants, same thing. On my knees, dig it out and put it in. I think what is needed most importantly is the passion or the drive to do it. Because if you're not into it, then you're gonna find every excuse. You need this. You need that. Uh, right now to actually irrigate the system, I mean earlier I said I'll tell you a little later but since you brought it up, I've actually piped the wastewater from the washing machine into the garden area so that actually irrigates the um, plot so we're not using NWC or any other water source. It is liquid that we have already been using that can actually irrigate the same space. So. You just have to decide what you want to do and just get it done. It doesn't need no extensive tools or any expensive tools either. Simple cutlass can get you started and get you moving. Which crops would you say are the best crops to grow at home? And then which ones would you suggest are like good quick crops to grow? Because sometimes we can be very impatient and we want to plant and reap now. So, you know, what's your opinion on that? I, I don't know if I have a recommendation for the best crops. I mean, I'd simply say produce what you're going to consume. I mean, if you don't like it, if you're not going to eat it, then why bother with it? So produce what you know you're going to like or what you're going to consume. If you're into fruits, go into fruits. If you're into vegetables, go into vegetables. It really is about you ultimately. So, yeah. How long did it take for you to get your first set of crops? Like, you know, from planting to reaping? What was that like? Wow, how long? <laughs> As I said earlier, it was trial and error. So to believe me, it took years to actually get where I'm at now, where I'm actually reaping um, produce. At one time, everything was drying up. Um, okay, even recently, when let's say I've gotten the hang of things, it ended up becoming mango season. And all these things that drop off of the tree, them, they've been breaking the banana suckers, they've hit down tomato plant, they have stripped the June plum tree and that's just mangoes falling, something that you almost can't control unless you're going to net it and catch it. So tell you a timeline, it really is up to you whether you have that green thumb or not. But there are quick um, quick crops that you can do, um, like take you four weeks, six weeks, your cucumbers, your peppers of the world, your cabbage, your callaloo. It really depends on what it is that you plan to put there and how ready the soil is, how prepared are you to make sure that you water them, irrigate them. Do you have white fly issues that you need to take care of? And I mean, that might sound complex to some people like, hey, I'm not trying to scare you, but things will happen and that will determine how long you actually get to reap. But it's definitely a rewarding feeling. So I'll say whether four weeks, six weeks or a year, tasting your own fruits or vegetables, believe me, is different from buying it in store so the timeline I don't think should matter truth is I've been able to reap um, scallion um, cucumber uh, very small cucumber but it came there's pepper that we have known abundance um, still growing there's been several other things there's pine there is a mini drupal plum tree that is growing um, but what's good about it is that the feeling that you get when you realize that you're actually consuming what it is that you've actually put out there so um yeah i'm definitely eating what i grow and living that life if you don't mind could you like just take us outside give us a quick video tour of your garden so we can see how you set it up i know you're in portmore um, and some people may be hesitant about the space allocation but can you just show us to give us an idea of how you have laid it out and how they could do it similarly. So this is the vegetable garden as it is. And uh, this area, what we do with it is, this is where I actually build the soil. Because this is Portmore, so the soil isn't exactly the prettiest. It's usually very dry and not necessarily 
the most nutritious for the plants. So what we do is we put vegetable peelings, fruit peelings, anything that can create a compost heap into these two buckets here. Uh, right now you can see mango, um, skin, what's that, orange, cabbage, lettuce peelings that's going inside. It's not very pretty, but you know, your hands have to get dirty when you're dealing with a garden. And then we dump it into this area here um, and then dump the dirt on top of it, leave it for a few weeks. And that's where we get most of our soil for the planting. Now we have two banana trees here in the garden that's doing nicely. Um, a little trampled from mangoes, you'll see one of the leaves right there. This area had uh, tomatoes and an additional pepper tree, but again, everything got beaten this season with the mangoes. Had a pretty fruitful season with the East Indians here. So one lesson learned is anything that's going here has to be sturdy, or I'm gonna build a slight shed in the area to protect during the season, but in the off season, everything is fine. What you're looking on here is supposed to be a miniature June plum tree that also got trampled, but as you can see, there's fresh growth. So I'm definitely trying to keep and care and ensure that that June plum becomes fruitful in future. We have our, what's left of our tomato plant that's coming here. I'm gonna let it grow in the interim, but right now, as I said, this is a work in progress garden. We're restoring the soil and stuff for the next crop. Uh, here we have our pepper tree. This one is fighting the white flies, but it's doing pretty good. You know, we'll get some reasonable sized peppers off it. We've done a pick this morning already. So what you're seeing are the additional ones that are on. We have pine that's coming up nicely here. Again, a few broken limbs there again from the mangoes. This area had scallion, which did surprisingly better than I expected. Um, initially, I thought I was gonna lose them, but we're able to get some out of it. In the interim, I've planted mondegrass. I'm not sure the name of this plant, but I kind of like it. So I'm trying to catch those for decorative purposes around the front house into the botanical garden, as I like to call it. And here we have another banana tree, a sucker, which was a recent gift to me. And that's there. And here we actually have a coca plant that's doing very well. This coca plant was actually planted by my four-year-old daughter, who got it from her great-grandfather. And she said, Daddy, I want to plant too. So we put cocoa in and surprisingly doing well. Let's see what comes of it. What you're seeing here in this pipe is actually a pipe that I've connected to the washing machine in the house. So it's a drain water from the washing machine that actually irrigates the entire garden bed around here. If you notice, you'll see the dark spots because we did a small load this morning. So the rinse water from that actually has come out and you'll see it channels in towards where all the plants would be to actually water everything. It goes right back down to where the banana trees are. Yeah, and that's pretty much it for the backyard garden. Um, again, I'm gonna be doing some reorganizing the next time around to see if I can get more plants out of the same space and see if we can get a more fruitful season. You know, this is so good. This is really good information. I really love the way that you have the layout of it. It's just a narrow channel that you have running right along. I love that you planted everything in a row so you can identify each crop by section. Um, I like that it doesn't take up a lot of space, but it holds a lot of different produce. So nobody would, I guess, anticipate that they could just have a narrow track like that and lay them out, you know, one after one after the other. So I really like that. And what really kind of appeals to the photographer in me is I love that right away you have created a memory and that will last for the next generation because you allowed your daughter to plant something from the previous generation. Like that's just an amazing story. I love that. Um, and it just says to me that a home is really where you can create family. You know, a house is a building, but a home is really what you make it. And I love that you can be outside in the garden with your family, with your children, showing them what to do. You don't have to be cooped up in the house even though we're at home. You go outside, you you know, you exercise because you're out there taking some sunlight, getting your vitamins from the sun. Um, and you have your, your daughter participating, so I really love that. So I want to thank you so much for taking the time out and for sharing this. It's really awesome. You know, I definitely thank you for having me and you're most welcome. I do hope this video, you know, is useful to somebody else. You know, use what you have, eat what you grow. 
And you know, talking about farming and ground produce and stuff, whenever I have a client and we're looking at houses, and you know, it's houses with yard space, I always say to them, hey, it's a plus if you have fruit trees. If you have an ackee tree, your breadfruit tree, I mean, if you could actually find a way to plant some sawfish, that would be great. <laughs> because, you know, you have to pay your monthly mortgage if, you, if you're taking a loan. And sometimes it can be tight, let's just be real. But if you come out, go around to your garden, you have your ackee tree, you have your breadfruit tree, and then, you know, you plant a little skill and your tomato. And you go and you have your breakfast. If you want it for dinner, whatever, you have something to eat. And you know, you can plant your fruit trees around there. So you can, you know, you allow the property that you're purchasing to work for you. So those are some positives to look for. And even if you are buying a property that doesn't have fruit trees there, one of the first things you should do after you design how you're gonna lay out your house on it, just start planting, plant that seed. And while you're constructing and building it, and you keep watering it, so it will kind of grow with you. So that's just a tip and idea you can bear in the back of your mind the next time you go house hunting. And if you live in an apartment, one of the things that you can look for when you're going apartment shopping is if you can allocate a space where you can you know, put some plants, maybe on the inside. If there is a balcony, you can put it out on the balcony. But these are things when you go house hunting, you kind of plot out where you're going to put what. So I will do an episode on things to look for when you're house hunting. But right now we're just talking about gardening, planting your own little fruits and seasons at home. So for all my people who are in apartments or smaller spaces or just you do not have that yard space, do not feel left out, I got your back. I saw some images, I'm going to share them with you here. Um, I think they're kind of cute and easy to do. So if you look at the picture, you realize that literally they just took the, the water bottle and cut it out and then you can put your soil in there and plant your seeds. So those will give you some smaller crops, I suppose, like, you know, you could do your skeleton there, um, your mint, some smaller stuff like that. Um, there are ways that you can grow. Just create a small space. If you are fortunate enough to have a balcony, you can use that space. Just allocate a small corner and plant two or three items in a pot. Or if you don't want to go pot shopping, you can use the water bottle idea I just showed you. There are ways to get it done. Um, no, it's a great time you're at home instead of going out to shop you know you can try and see what you can harvest on your own see what other skills you have hidden underneath those thumbs those green thumbs and i hope they're green you'll find out soon enough i hope that somebody is gonna try it if you're gonna try it or if you have tried it Please leave me a note in the comments. Let me know how that has been. If you have additional tips, please share it so the rest of us can know what to do. And um, happy farming. What is the name of this fruit? Do you know it? And if you're not from Jamaica and there's a different name for it, please also share that in the comments. For those of you who are from Jamaica or who are Jamaican, you're supposed to know that one here. What is the name of this fruit?